Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to my COVID-19 daily vlog, uploading a new video every evening at 6 p.m. to keep you sane during lockdown. Well, it's time for another Peddler's Rides, and for this one, we literally are talking about rides. Now then, before we get stuck into the video, clearly we need a peddler's pup. But you asked and I deliver. Yes, we're not talking about a pup this time. No, we've got what I think, I think probably we should call peddler's purrs rather than peddler's pussies. Um, yes, we've got a cat. So uh, this picture was sent in by Stephen Adams and this is Vinny the cat who clearly likes to do a little bit of car maintenance. No, people, don't worry, he hasn't been run over. He's actually doing some work on the front end of Stephen's car. So, um, now then, let's have a chat about the subject of today's video. I have been sent cars from all over the world, ranging from the worst shed possible to the most incredible supercar and everything in between. But I've also been sent lots of other stuff. Um, so I thought it would be quite interesting to do some bikes. No, not the kind that you're gonna pedal. These are the kind that have an engine in them. So the first bike we're gonna have a look at is we're gonna head over to Derek. Now Derek has a 1989 Yamaha XJ900 that he's been working on for the last sort of three years or so and, and I have to say this thing is beautiful and sounds incredible. Uh, hello fellow peddlers, this is my Yamaha XJ900, uh, 1989, um, converted to a calf racer. I started the project some three years ago um, job got in the way, ended up giving it to a bike builder to finish off for me. Uh, the main conversion of the bike is that it's gone from twin shocks to a, a single shock. Everything else on the bike is standard, other than the electrical system, which is running the Moto Gadget Blue system, which is a, a keyless system. Um, it does away with all the unnecessary electronics of the bike, um, strip the bike pretty much back to basics. It's a really, really nice bike to ride. Um, got loads of power. Uh, it, it sounds great. It can be a little bit handful at low speed, but generally the bike is pretty, pretty cool. I'm really, really chuffed to bits with it. Let me just take off the seat cowl and you can have a look at the gubbins and the workings underneath. So here's the Moto Gadget system. This is the system here. This is what does away with all the electronics. Um, so that takes over. And let me pop the seat back on a quick sec. Let's pop the seat back on. Okay, so as I say, it's running the keyless system, which is which is here. I should, if predicting. Uh, right. Just get the key out. So this is the Moto Gadget keyless system. So that just pops to there. M ride ready. You should hear the bike. It's connected to my phone already. So that's already connected to there. The bike has four buttons, two obviously indicators, one horn and one start. Let's give it a little blip. There you go. The bike sounds really, really nice. You can definitely hear me coming along as I come down the road. Um, really, really nice bike. Really, really pleased with it. Sounds great. Looks great. shuts the bike off 
yeah so there you go that's my uh, Yamaha XJ 900 1989 and the bike in the background is a little little triumph bonnie for a little bit of fun and every day okay hope you enjoyed the review of this bike and uh thank you for watching now i i really love motorbikes i've, I've never really ridden a bike rode a 125 around the block once i've been on the back of a few and i appreciate them for what they are sadly when i left home at the age of 18 my father gave me two rules to live by <laughs> never get a girl pregnant before you're married and don't buy a motorbike. Do either of those two things and I will never speak to you again. And then I married someone who also pretty much said, you buy a motorbike and we're going to get a divorce. So I'm, I'm never really going to get the chance to ride a bike, but I do think they're beautiful things. And mate, Derek, I think that is an absolutely cracking, cracking bike. So we've now had a look at, if you like, uh, a classic bike. Now we're going to look at a much more contemporary bike. We're going to head over to Gary. And Gary's going to talk us around his BMW R1200RT. And as a car owner, I found this particular video just fascinating. Hi guys, my name's Gary. I'm from Bristol. This is my BMW R1200RT 2010 model. It is in the polar metallic colour. The bike itself is an 1170cc and has a power output of approximately 110 horsepower from the boxer engine, which is down here. It's got twin sparks, dual overhead cam. It is 259 kilos wet weight. So on the heavier side as far as bikes go, but once moving, it feels very light and is surprisingly nimble for a bike of her size. It has a 27 litre petrol tank and I'm currently averaging approximately 51 miles per gallon with a combination of daily commute and weekend runs out and about. That's before the lockdown, of course. There are no modifications fitted to her and no plans to do so as of yet. The bike is very comfortable to be on and enables you to do many hours in the saddle before the numb bottom syndrome sets in. I'm also informed by the good lady wife that the pillion seat is also very comfy and the foot peg to seat position for her uh, is also very comfy for many hours in the saddle should we want to. The bike comes with as standard, if we wander around here, let me just clamber on the bike okay the bike comes as standard with ABS traction control uh, which is this little button here traction control electronic suspension adjustment the screen is also electronically adjustable via this switch here um, and you've got the trip computer cruise control um, and a sat nav I've, I've had fitted uh, Garmin Zumo heated grips and heated seats front and rear the switch for the heated pillion seat is just up under there hope you can see that on the camera the bike also has a shaft drive on here oh there we are under there <laughs> so uh, no messy chain maintenance for this one uh, it's got the two side panniers fitted and the top box which will hold a surprising amount of luggage uh, they're very easily removable from the bike by using the key which is just a quick twist of the key to the release side of that that handle pops up and you literally just lift off the bike um, and they're just as easy to put back on you just to uh, sit them in the correct lugs on both sides and then just drop the handle down back into the lock position so um i guess the most quirky thing about the bmw um on this bmw in particular and a lot of the big bmws is the front suspension it does away with the conventional forks and uses a telelever system which hopefully you can see inside there so there's the shock and there's the suspension system itself is that uh, telelever so uh, basically what that does is instead of on the conventional forks where you got a lot of brake dive when you uh, use the front brakes you get none 
on uh, the BMW at all, which in turn makes it for a very stable chassis. Um, I think that's about it really. Uh, I don't know what else I can tell you. Uh, the mirrors, although they're in a funny position down there, not on the handlebars, um, are absolutely fantastic when you're on it. Uh, the only thing I have added, as I said, is the Garmin sat-nav and the little flip screen at the top here. Um, being that I'm six foot two, um, in the lowest position when I'm commuting, the uh, buffeting was still a little annoying. So uh, I've just put the little flip screen on there. Anyway, that is it from me. Uh, this is a very short uh, introduction to the BMW R1200 RT. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed the video and the walk round. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe. Yeah, now I know modern bikes have lots of gadgets on them, especially big touring bikes like that, but I had no idea that they had things like, I mean, ABS has been around on bikes for a long time, I guess, but traction control, I know some sports bikes nowadays have anti-wheelie mechanisms on them, heated grips, heated seats, sat nav, a screen that moves, mega thing, absolutely mega, found that really interesting, lovely bike as well. Now for the last video um, in today's Peddler's Rides, one of the things I've been taken aback by is videos have been sent to me from all over the world. Um, and in this last video, we're heading to Panama to a guy called Jose. And this video pretty much includes everything we love. It's got dogs, it's got bikes, and it's got lots of cars. And if you stay tuned long enough, there's even a very nice mini in there as well. Over to you, Jose. Good afternoon, Mr. Ped. My name is Jose Van Beverhart, and I'm from the Republic of Panama. So these are my doggies that wanted to say hello to you. And I'll show you now my rides. This is my Yamaha 125cc scooter. Very good for traffic. She's a 2014. This is my 2009 ER6N Kawasaki 650cc for a little bit longer rides. Not super fast, but very comfortable and a very reliable motorcycle. So now coming over here, I will now show you my 2012 Mini Cooper S. It's an R58 uh, coupe. Some people like them, some people hate them. I guess it's a matter of taste. She's a chili red with a black top. I happen to love this car. It rides like on rails, I guess very similar to yours, except with a hard top. As you can see, I did the chrome delete. the standard generation 2 1.6 liter turbo with a K&N filter very nice car and this is my pride and joy this is my 2003 E46 BMW 330 CI she's 17 years old She's stock with the M package. Everything is factory. So you can see the interior is in excellent condition. I made a few modifications, like I changed the radio, the head unit to an Android uh, head unit. So it has all the amenities of a brand new car. My next project is I have to change the head, the head, the headliner because it's starting to come apart. So that's my next project on this car. But not bad for a 17 year old car. Very reliable, very dependable. And she's stock except for a K&N filter.
not the fastest car, but in my opinion, one of the best engines BMW has ever made. A three liter inline six, no turbo, naturally aspirated engine, very well balanced engine, very reliable, very fun to drive. The paint is original, everything is original. She came with a Chrome Delete from the factory. So there you have it. These are my rides. I hope you like them. Have a great day and thanks for all the interest and information you give in your channel. Cheers. Now I know when I put the request out for Peddler's Rides I asked everybody to film in landscape and that one was filmed in portrait. Um, so I know it wasn't ideal but I just wanted to put it in because I found it really cool that we all the way over in Panama we have someone watching the channel and such a diverse range of things. My friend you have coronavirus quite badly and you won't know this but Jose will. I actually cut a couple of cars out of that just because I, I had some time constraints on this particular episode. But yeah, beautiful BMW but I must say uh, your uh, R58 Coupe was very cool. I love the spec uh, and a great video. Thank you very much for sending it in. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. A little bit interesting, different to normal. I'm trying to keep these as diverse as possible and there is plenty more where these came from. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film guys, but you take care. Stay safe.